Hey everybody, it's Aquila, and this is a Lefty Knitter Podcast, and this is episode 185 here on the YouTubes. I know I've been a little bit absent, and I apologize, but life has taken me for a whirlwind. Completely. Like, completely. I, uh, first off, welcome. <laughs> I live in Baltimore. I'm primarily a knitter, but I do all kinds of other crafty things. And I like to show you that usually through daily videos and then I smush it all together, but it hasn't been, um, life has not allowed me to do that lately. It's been very busy. And so that's where we're at. So I have a lot to show only because I demoed my machine at the Maryland Alpaca and Fleece Festival. Which, if you've been with me for a long time, the first video I ever put up on YouTube was a video of a, a, like a vlog of going to the festival. And that was like six years ago. So I had taken my circular sock machine there. I had a table set up with all the things that you can crank on a machine. And then I had my machine there and I was just demoing. So I, before the festival, I started freaking out about making sure I had all different kinds of samples to show on the table. So I had had this cranked previously. This is a Pico hung hem on a blocker, haven't closed the toe yet. And I was able to make its mate while I was there. So now I have a, a mate that still needs a toe closed also. I had never done a heel with the river still on the machine. Meaning when you do a heel on the machine, you can see kind of what you're doing. Well, if you want to have the ribbing going down the top of the foot of the sock, uh, you could take it off, but then it's a lot of work to put it back on. So you make your heel while the river is still in the machine. So I wanted to have an example of that. So I cranked this. I haven't cranked its mate yet, but this is a one by one rib at the top. This is a Knit Picks Felici. So was the other yarn I just showed. I'm trying to go fast through these, so I apologize. And then I switched it, so it's a one by three rib. I did my heel with the river on. I have a little bit of a pre-heel where the ribbing stops. And then the rib goes down the top of the foot, it stops, and then you have the toe. So I had this as an example. I haven't made its mate. So John knew I was going to have to have all this yarn coned up to take so I could demo, so I could show people the machine. Well... Uh, he went to Joanne's. He loves Pat and Croy socks. I had these there as an example for people to see. And these are very worn and loved. And this is a Patton's Croy yarn. He loves really tall boot socks. So you can see how tall they are. It takes four balls of Patton's Croy for me to make a whole pair of socks. It's almost two full balls in one pair. So he went out and I think he bought every color that you can buy at Joann's, at least at our Joann's. I didn't crank all of them, but here was a pair. He hasn't worn these yet, so this is a pair. I cranked these at the, I, over the two days, I cranked 18 individual socks and two ball beanies. So I cranked a lot. I don't have some of that to show you because I actually bartered for yarn. <laughs> and I'll show you that in a minute too. Uh, so, he has these now. He, I think he's wearing a pair. And he also has this pair, which he already wore also. And this is a fun rainbow pair. So he's got a lot, of so a lot of new socks. He's very excited. He loves them so much. Oh, I also cranked a pair of leg warmers so people could see that, you know, uh, other than socks, what can you make on the machine? You can make lanyards. You can make flat fabric. I can make my ball beanies. You can make leg warmer. So this is yarn Hazel had picked out. And so I cranked these leg warmers for her. So now she can have these. I'll give these back to her. Uh, then I had a single ball of Manny Penny and I wanted to show people the shorty socks. So I have these. I've been closing the toes up at night. This is what I've been doing. I've been closing toes. I have not knit on anything new. Not a single thing. I will show you the fingerless gloves I was working for John. I ended up able, I, I was able to finish the other fingers and weave in all my ends. So these are actually ready to go for the convertible part. So I just have 
to put the convertible part onto these and then I'm going to dye them. So these, these are still in the works. This is the only thing that other than closing up toes and, and cranking stuff for the demos I, I've done. I probably overbrought stuff like I well not really because I cranked practically everything I had there was one yarn that the tension wasn't coming out right and I did end up ripping that one individual sock out this was a, another yarn this is yarn John had dyed and it's a Jaeger spun base and John dyed this gotta close the toes up for that uh, I didn't I don't have all the toes closed yet this was yarn I believe Hazel had helped John die in one of the Johnny Bow Dies episodes, so I have to close up those toes. Yeah, it was... Oh, and here's the two ball beanies. Ran out of yarn, and so I ended up putting, like, pink at the end, but nice, stretchy ball beanies. These will end up going in the shop soon, and then a purple one. Don't ask me what yarn's there, because I can't remember. I try to put that in the project... Uh, in the listing, but I don't always remember or have the tags. So I told you guys I had uh, bartered. I love bartering. I love bartering. I had bartered for some yarn, and I cranked two sock, two pairs of socks for a vendor. And let me find that. Sorry, I might crinkle a little here. And that was Seventh Floor Yarns. They're out of New York. So I got these two skeins of Tweed DK on their Jinx and on their Silver Fox colorway. It's the DK Tweed and it's 231 yards. So I, I got these at the festival. And then I also, oh, I have to, I don't have that up here. I have to show you guys. I did buy, um, no, I didn't. John bought some yarn because we... Oh, I have to show you. I have to show you. Okay, let me show you other things. I'm going to have a new segment coming out on this channel. And it's uh, uh, speed questions for vendors. And I know not everybody I'm going to be able to probably do at a, a festival. Um, places get really busy. So it might have to end up being on like Zoom calls. And I've never done that before. So that'll be new. But this one, I was at a festival and I asked Froggit Yarns to be my quote guinea pig for this so stay tuned to this channel because I do have all the footage I need to just put it to edit it together but they were so nice Tasha and Brian they have the yarn truck which they it's a mobile yarn truck it's amazing it's so cool they gifted some yarn for giveaways so I don't know when that's gonna be but they gifted this set this is a Merino DK Duo, and the, it's 213 yards for the main skein and 49 yards for the mini skein, the DK Tadpole is what they call it. So yeah, I have this to give away. This is called, called Twisted Berries, so this will be a giveaway. Sorry. And then this will also be a giveaway. This is a... This is their... Frog legs fingering. So there are two 50 gram skeins of fingering weight here in two different colorways. You get 460 yards, 462 total, 231 each. And the colors are Leafy, Sea Dragon, and Abyss. I love that you can buy 50 um, grams. And if you watch the video, you'll get a little more information about upcoming products that they're going to have. So thank you guys so much like and it was fun doing that video I tried to make it like speedy I wanted it to be like fast questions fast answers so the video will be hopefully no longer than like 10 minutes that's that's my goal, that's my goal. the other thing I bought I should have brought up the other yarn because I think what I'm going to end up doing have you seen the float shawl I'm going to insert picture here of the float shawl I thought that's what I wanted to do. Now this company, we're right next to us, Cozy Color Works. What she, she dyes these yarns for the specific uh, pooling. So it'll do the pooling that you need, but she does it so you get a double skein. So it's two skeins in one and you don't have to make any knots or ties or anything like that. Cause you get, it's one big baby. 
It's one big yarn baby. And it's a uh, 1,100 yards, eight ounces of yarn, fingering weight, excuse me. And I, it's assigned pooling. That's what I was trying to think of. The float shawl uses assigned pooling, but I, I want to do maybe the sweater. I'll insert a picture here. And I have two skeins from Andrea, the cat lady, C-A-T-T, -T, craft all the things, of the same color, two different bases, but it'll be fine. I mix bases all the time. But it's a green and I think mixing this with the assigned pooling with the green stripes oh I think that's gonna be what I do instead of the shawl she at the booth they had the shawls all up and she had samples knit of every color that she had with the assigned pooling I thought that was super awesome and clever so that is cozy color works awesome so we were there, we were talking to Shirsty Kelly, Shirsty Cat. She had mentioned she needs to bust out her, she has an antique sock knitting machine, but she said she didn't have any bonnets for it. So I went and I cranked out some bonnets for her and I'm gonna mail them. She's not far, but I probably won't see her in person. I cranked out this bonnet out of some, a leftover mini of a self striping I'd add a color at the bottom to make it just a little bit longer now I did this one without the rings now I've never done a split ring bonnet before and guess what I did I did a split ring bonnet so John had yarn left from his rainbow socks and I did a bonnet with split rings what who am I this is awesome I I'm really excited that I was able to do this it wasn't even that difficult and I watched a video from Karen Rommel, but I think her name has changed. She got, I believe she got married. So that's her maiden name, but I'm sure you'll be able to find her. CMS Love is um, her videos. I watched one of her videos on how to put the split rings on. Oh, the other thing, real quick. I have so much to like, but it was a whirlwind. It was a whirlwind of like two weeks. That's, I gotta show that later. But that was awesome. This is just extra yarn that I was going to possibly put on cones. And it's just in this bag. I'm not going to. It's fine. It's fine. Froggit also sells the baskets from that are handmade, I believe, in Ghana. Let me let me look. African Market Baskets, Weaving Hope, Healthcare, and Education. Fair trade baskets for any use in any decor. Every basket is handwoven in village co-ops in Ghana, Africa. Your basket purchase helps provide healthcare and school supplies in support of the weavers, their families, and their villages. So, and I guess that's some of the color combinations you can get. John grabbed this one. It's beautiful. And it has these uh, buckles on it that you could hang wherever and it's giant it's it's giant so there you go this is I've always seen them we've never purchased one and now I we own one we own one John bought it but um, we own it so I don't know where it's going or what it'll be used for also there was a new vendor that was gone that had shirts that John loves all his shirts with all his different animals and this is I believe this is them now i'm not now i'm i believe this is them korea coats i could be wrong if i'm wrong i'm sorry but john got a shirt and he got me a shirt john has been wearing his one alpaca shirt for years and years and i'm it, it, it's getting a little old y'all look at that look at that it's so cute so he has a new shirt and i have a new shirt and I'm very excited. Or, you know what? I could be wrong. This might be his, size-wise. I'm not sure. <gasps> what? That's so cute. All right. So that's what I have to show you. I also have some other things. But I just, I'm overwhelmed right now. I'm overwhelmed. I've also, the one book I've been listening to, I've been taking breaks on and off from Not In My City. Um which is all about redlining and whatnot in Baltimore. So I saw my friend Danielle was reading this book on Goodreads because I stalk people on Goodreads. And 
This book came up and it was sounded very intriguing. So I I want to go and Google this person's name like right now. Like I want to go do it, but I don't want the book to be ruined. Um, it's called Island Queen by Vanessa Riley. I'll show you the cover. And it's so good. It is so good so far. And it says it's a remarkable, sweeping, historical novel based on the incredible true life story of Dorothy Kerwin Thomas, a free woman of color who rose from slavery to become one of the wealthiest and most powerful landowners in the colonial West Indies. I want to Google everything about this woman, but I don't want to do it because I don't want to ruin the book. So I am sure as soon as I finish this book, I will be like Googling as much as I possibly can because it's so interesting. And I'm hoping, you know, it takes place in the late 1700s. So it's, I guess it's based on maybe documents and letters and whatnot. So yeah, oh God, it's just, it's so good. It's so good. So if you're interested in reading something of that nature, Island Queen by Vanessa Riley. All right, I need to go. I need to clean this up. And then, yeah, I have, my brain is just spinning, y'all, with um, all the things. Because I also, this is in advance, I was asked also to demo again at um, Yarn Centric which is held the day before Maryland Sheep and Wool on Friday in Frederick, Maryland. So I need to uh, get a banner that says uh, circular sock machine demos um, and then also make like a little thing and put it in a frame on the table that says this is everything that can be made like on a circular sock machine. I had so many questions. My voice after Saturday was totally like froggy and Sunday was, I mean, I was cranking and talking but I could tell my voice was like not doing as well, but I did it. I did it and it was great. And I really hope that um, just showing people the circular sock machines in general, because you don't see them in person a lot of times, unless you know somebody that owns one or you go to a crank in me, like, well, why would you go to a crank in if you don't have a machine? I don't know, whatever. So. I feel like people were just like super interested and whether they go and I told them they need to do their research on the different types of machines because there's still um, like four or five makers out there of machines. You need to do your research. I did my research. I just ended up choosing the Earl Backer Gearheart based on my research. So again, you know, yeah. And it got me to uh, talk to quite a few people who had machines already and I ended up joining the Circular Sock Knitting Machine Society. So stay tuned. I don't know what I'll really say about that <laughs> but it I think it's going to be an interesting little journey that I'm going to be taking myself on. I already got a little bit of knowledge from being a member and I will probably end up showing you things that I crank that are things that I learned from that group but I'm not going to give away of all the secret sauce you know but I am I am very intrigued by it all <laughs> just very intrigued I wish you know the the one really nice thing about joining that is it tells you when there's crankins that are near you and other people that also have machines that are near you so it's like a whole wealth of additional knowledge that I did not have access to before, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? It makes sense. All right, I'm at 19 minutes. I don't know what else I'm going to have to show you before Saturday because it's already Thursday. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been, it's, it's been just a lot. So I apologize that I haven't put out a video but I'm putting one out now. Well, soon. You'll see it. I mean, you're seeing it. Okay, I'm going. <laughs> Bye, bud. I did not start this video. <laughs> that was weird. Okay, well, we're just going to go. My video started recording. Just out of the blue. That was ghostly. <laughs> All right, it is Friday, and it is John's birthday. Yay! I'm not going to tell you how old he is. Well, I mean... He already told.
told people how old he is. <sighs> so I had a knit night last night with my group that I've been with for a very long time. And I had started doing a swatch for the Autumn League Pullover. I'm using... I was going to make a whole another sweater, but I've decided to do something else with it. I'm using the Scout by Calborn Woolens. It's a DK weight. This calls for the Line Brands Jeans DK yarn that um, people go gaga over. I have this so I was like I'm not gonna buy a new yarn and I've wanted to make a sweater out of this anyway I swatched with a seven it calls for 19 stitches per four inches so that's like nine and a half and then 24 rows and I'm getting pretty much spot on with the seven I wasn't sure I hadn't blocked it yet so I wasn't sure if I liked the fabric of the seven so I did last night I started doing a few rows with a US size six needle. I'm gonna lift this up and show you. I have it on a blocking board right now. Here's the yarn. And so I was worried about, I was worried because the fabric seemed really loose and I didn't want it to be like super see-through loose fabric for this really super cozy pullover sweatshirt sweater. And so, that's why I used the sixes and I seeing what I got there. And then I was reading because Ravelry has a comment section and everybody complains that this yarn pills like a lot. And I'm like, well, I mean, no matter what I make with it, it's going to pill. But I guess in a sweater, it's a little disheartening that it's going to pill. But I do have a gleaner, so... And that's only like 13 comments out of however many people have ever used this yarn. So is it the people that are only complaining about the yarn that are commenting and other people don't think that it's such a problem? I just don't, I hate reading reviews sometimes because some people are very accurate and then some people have higher expectation. I don't know. Like, you, you know what I'm saying, right? So I just have, I, I don't cut my yarn from my swatch because, well, I'm going to use it. It's just what I've always done. I know some people will take their swatches and they'll hang them up or they'll like throw them away. I'm like, oh God, I can't do that. So here is, and uh, excuse the purple yarn because I was using the purple yarn to hold the live stitches at the top. Let's see if I can just get it out of the way. Okay. So down here at the bottom is in a seven and up here I did the six. It's not quite dry, but I am getting gauge with the seven. So I think, I think it's not going to be too bad. It's just a little damp. I probably should have taken it off here, but you can kind of see that it's like see-through and it's see-through with the six also. I'm thinking, I mean, I did wash and block this. It's definitely not as see-through as it was before. So it bloomed a little bit. Also, I'm probably not going to wear this sweater without something under it. T-shirt or tank top, whatever. So, the see-through factor shouldn't be such, like, a huge, excuse me, deal in my mind. Uh, so, yeah. I just put a few pearl bumps in there so I could tell where the change was. I'm going with a seven since my gauge, my stitch count is like, I didn't have to aggressively block it. I just laid it out and it was like right on spot, on spot for the, the gauge. All right. So I think I'm going to cast this on tonight. I just bought the pattern. It's a free pattern. If you go to the blog post, which you can like get rid of, you know, there's always like ads and other stuff. Um, but I decided I wanted to support the designer and I think it's only seven fifty. It's not too bad. Also, the thing I learned is they only had like maybe five sizes or four when the, when it first came out, it now goes up to like a five XL. There's like, I don't know how many sizes, like eight or nine sizes total. So bravo for the designer. I don't I'll put all the information will be down below. Uh, for the designer and good for them to making it more in size inclusive. I'm not exactly sure 
I haven't done enough research for myself to know what size is like at what point do you stop making sizes because like there's a wide range of people in the world so I just don't know uh for size inclusive inclusivity um is 4x like good enough is 5x or does that really depend then not so much on the that it depends on the inches or centimeters uh of the finished garment versus what they're labeling as an extra large or large or whatever I have to do some more research on that because I don't know because I fall into the large extra large category for most things so I'm not hitting size points that are um in the, in the range that sometimes are not provided in patterns so there you go all right oh I have mm, let me pause I learned a new heel to do on my machine. Not so much the technique of wrapping and turning or which needles to put down. Um, it's the same amount of needles, so I am splitting my cylinder half and a half, which I guess I could do a deep heel, but I feel like this is creating more of a deep heel. Now, I'm going to show you a regular short row heel first. So let me take this off and I'll show you guys a regular short row heel on the machine, which is using half the cylinder stitches so you're getting like here to here right that's it's like a regular short row type heel and then based on this chart I have it tells me based on regular short row heels and toes how many stitches to go in between so I'm gonna have to probably adjust how my chart works based on this new heel because you're definitely doing more rows well if I hold it up against here, it's really hard to tell. It's definitely more rows. Okay, so let me take this off. You see, it's, it'll be hard to show you unless I show it in front of it also. But I'm going to, I still have it attached to my cast on bonnet. So, because I'm going to undo this. This is just me messing around with this heel. So I believe the hand knitted heel... <sighs> And the heel on the machine, they call it the same thing. It's like a three wedge heel or a tomato heel is what they're calling it. I So I attempted that last night. It's much more like round and I know on my blocker, it's probably hard to tell, but it's much more like bulbous. Let's take it off the blocker real quick so I can kind of show you how it's more bulbous than it than a short row heel is. So the short row heel comes to that point and that's it. And it like then expands back out again. This is like much more round, like, like a tomato, I guess is why they call it that. I wish I had um, a better example in different yarn. Cause I feel like a, this variegated yarn is really hard to see, but my short rows are starting and I got to figure out how to make the, the, the beginning and stitches on each side uh, tighten them up a little but it starts like here and it ends like here so it's much wider so I'm gonna have to count like how many rows you do on a short row heel versus this heel to then account for how much I would be putting on my foot because if it's like 10 rows more so say this is 20 and this is 30 that's five on each side you're adding more to so then I'd have to subtract if it says to do 100 rows for the foot I would be doing 95 if my if my thinking and logic is correct but I just wanted to show you guys this because I feel like it does make it more of a deep heel uh, if you I'll, I'll try to find maybe a video on hand knitting a tomato heel because most people don't have a sock machine and I think the video for this heel is uh, a private link so uh, see if I can find a hand knit one only because people might be interested and maybe you've knit them already and yeah because I think in in the hand knit one after you do your first wedge then you do two rows completely in the round because you're you're decreasing and then you're increasing again your stitches till you get to here and then you decrease and then or increase decrease and then increase and then decrease and then increase and in between each of those three the two wedges because the third one then you start knitting and around again 
you're knitting two rows all the way around the whole sock. And I think it does create like a deeper heel. So if you're looking for a different kind of heel, the only thing you can't do is if you're doing a contrast heel, you can't do this type uh, hand knitting because then you're gonna have stripes here of the contrast color. So fair warning. But I'm gonna see if I can find a video that's a hand knitting for this heel and I'll put that down below also so you can see. But if you hold this up, let me just try holding it up in front of it. Here. Yeah, these go way out here and if this was all the way up, if this was t to the top, it would only be going like here. So you're definitely using more rows. I just learned how to do this, so I'm no expert, but I found it very interesting to be able to do a different kind of heel. I don't know how it wears on my foot yet, because obviously I haven't made one in a full sock <laughs> to try it, but there we go. All right. Yeah, I'm excited to cast that sweater on. Very excited. All right. Until tomorrow, I guess. Hey everybody, it is Saturday and I need, hey, hey, uh, I need to wrap up this video. It is the 19th of November. We have been up pretty early and we just started cleaning our butts off because, you know, you live in a home and a home gets piles of clutter and you got to clean all that up before you can have like Thanksgiving and Christmas and put a tree up and do the things. So we were doing that. So I just got out of the shower and I have wet hair. I think Hayes and I are going to go today and get a haircut. Just like a healthy trim. We both need it desperately. I cast on my Autumn League pullover. And there were some comments because I had posted my swatch about um, modifying it to knitting it in the round, etc. But the designer has now modified, like I said, the pattern to include more sizes, but it's also in the round. So I. I'm excited. The top part, um, don't, it's, this part's flat. I don't want to give away too much, but you will, it's to help for having more rows, I think, in the back to lift up the back of the sweater. Kind of like doing short rows if you join in the round, but then you're doing short rows. I think it's the same concept. So I have all these markers for where I'm going to have like sleeve stitches and whatnot, and that's for marking your increases. So I have what I think is gonna be the back part like that. I think. So I have some cast on y'all, did it. I needed a new project in my life and I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Do you guys remember, I, in, I, I inserted a picture, I'm gonna to try to insert a picture again here. I have the pattern name now. It is the Flora Culture Sweater or pullover. I'm not quite sure if she has, or if the designer, Dawn Barker, has anything after that. I think it's just called Flor Flora Culture. That is the designer who did the float shawl, but I told you guys I wanted to dig out some yarn. I have enough to do the sweater, and I don't know. I need, I, I need some opinions. Okay, so this was the yarn I got, right? And all these will have like the bits that you're doing that special stitch to make the planned pooling, right? Is that what they call it? Assigned pooling. Okay. I have this. Then I told you I had yarn from the cat lady and Andrea, I had gotten one as a gift, I think. And then Andrea may have sent me one, one as a gift from somebody else. And then I may, I don't remember. I don't remember how it all went down, but I have two of here be dragons. Okay. These are both Here Be Dragons, okay? But one is on the Perfect Sock Base, which is at 80-20, 420 yards. And the other one is on the Possumly Soft Merino 100% Superwash 19 Micron, which is like super, super soft. I feel like they dyed up very well. And because it's going to have the stripes of this in it, you won't notice. That's my, that's my thought process. I am just worried, and I'll pr I probably should take a picture. I don't need it to be super high contrast. Like, the picture is like this navy blue and then a white assigned pooling yarn. But what do you guys think? I know the green doesn't 
match exactly, but I don't think I would want it to match exactly because these are going to be like the little flowers. So these are going to be their own element and it doesn't need to be the exact green. I like it. I like it a lot. I might just have to do a swatch and see how it works up. But that is, that is my plan. I have so many shawls and that's why I think I have veered away from maybe doing a shawl versus doing the sweater. Because I'll have another sweater. <laughs> like, yee, yeah, okay. I don't know. Okay, I need to edit this and I need to edit my other video. And then I don't know what else we're doing today. I think we might try to go buy, we've been borrowing a table from my dad and I think we might go try to buy a more convenient table for our kitchen. <sighs> Maybe. We might just order it online because there was, a f there was a few we found online. I don't know. I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> it's just been a lot. This is like our first weekend where we don't have like set plans on a calendar. So, of course, what do we do? We're like, let's clean! But, you know, it needed it, right? It needed it. So, <sighs> all right. The floor should be dry. I should be able to go back into the other rooms in my house right now because <laughs> they were mopped, so they were all wet. And John's kind of a stickler for, you know, not walking on the floors while we're, they're wet. <laughs> all right, give me your opinion. What do you think? Do you think this would be cool? I'll maybe change this video to black and white for just a second and we can look at the contrast. All right. I hope everybody is uh, doing well, taking care of themselves. The holidays are a hard time. The holidays are a stressful time, um, can be a very joyous time. So do the things that you need to do that it is within your mindset and yeah, roll with it. That's yeah. If you got to just like knit a bunch of stuff, or crochet or craft. I get it. So, all right. That's all I have to say. And until the next video, uh, knit happy, y'all. Bye.